Okay, moving right along, we're going to look at ISACA's risk IT framework. Okay, now obviously, since ISACA puts out ISACA's risk management, risk IT framework, this is going to be something that would be fair game for the exam. Okay, so ultimately, what the framework addresses is that we need a means of evaluating risks. We need a means of identifying risks that are current in the near future, long-term risks, and we need to provide a structure for how to effectively respond to risk in a manner that's efficient and effective, has cost benefit, we need consistency. Basically, we have a lot of needs in relation to risk. So ultimately, if you can take a look at this little grid down in the corner, ultimately, um, ISACA says, look, there are three main elements when you're looking with risk. You're looking at risk. First of all, you have risk governance. Then you have risk evaluation. Then you have risk response. So what we ultimately want to be is we want to move to the right. So with risk governance, the first thing that we have to do is make sure we establish and maintain a common risk view. Didn't we say that's one of those elements that risk governance is responsible for, right? The governing entities need to make sure that we understand the risk context and the risk view of our organization. Then it's the responsibility of governance to incorporate that throughout the organization. Enterprise risk management is what ERM stands for. And then as we move on to RG3, Risk Governance 3, ultimately what we're looking to do is to make risk-aware business decisions. Okay. All right, so for risk evaluation, we start by collecting data, we analyze risk, and then we maintain our risk profile. When we talk about analyzing risk, we're looking at determining a value for risk. And then we have to respond to risk. So we articulate the risk, R2, we manage the risk, and then we're able to react to events as they come up, new risks perhaps. So that's part of ISACA's risk IT framework. And their goal here is to provide that structure to differentiate between governance, evaluation, and response, and ultimately provide us with means to move through to our ultimate goals of being um, able to respond quickly to risk events and to mitigate them appropriately. Okay, now ISACA also has a risk management life cycle. So when we look at the risk management life cycle, the idea, and you can see these arrows kind of revolving, and the idea there is risk management's never done. Right. If I were to say, hey, when are you done with dealing with risks, your answer should be never, ever, ever. Risks are one of those constant things in life. So when we're looking to conduct risk management within an organization, we start with risk identification, we move to risk assessment, then we mitigate our risks, and then we continually monitor and control risks. So if we look at these uh, across the, the, you know, let me just give you a quick definition for each of these. Um, with risk identification, we identify assets, threats, and vulnerabilities. Okay, we identify a risk. And remember, risk exists where we have an asset, a threat, and a vulnerability. As a matter of fact, sometimes you'll see people use kind of a conceptual formula. Risk equals asset times threat times vulnerability. It's not something you plug numbers into, but just that understanding. And then other places you'll just hear people say risk equals threats times vulnerabilities. Either of those definitions is fine, but really the one that's more accurate is asset times threat times vulnerability. You can have a threat and a vulnerability, but if your asset isn't worth anything, who cares, right? So you could see it either way. But risk identification is all about what am I protecting? What are the threats? What are the vulnerabilities? And that's risk identification. We're just identifying. But as we move into risk assessment, and another word for risk assessment or another word for assessment is analysis. Assessment and analysis could be used interchangeably. All right. And 
Assessment or analysis is all about a value. Give me a value. And the value can be qualitative or quantitative. Qualitative is subjective. We're going to use words like low, medium, and high. There's a high likelihood it's going to rain this weekend. All right. And then quantitative is objective. I'm not sure if I said that right, but, but qualitative is subjective. Quantitative is objective. Quantitative is based on facts. Give me empirical data. And usually when we're looking at the, the value of a risk, we tend to associate that with the idea of loss potential. What's my potential for loss? And you figure out the potential for loss by looking at probability times impact. I have a 50% chance of losing $12,000. That's a $6,000 risk. Okay, that's the potential for loss. All right, we move on to risk response and mitigation. Remember, the purpose of risk response is to mitigate residual risk to a degree that's acceptable by senior management. So whatever's residual, we're going to take that residual risk and mitigate it to the degree that's acceptable by senior management. And then what do we continue to do? We continue to monitor and control those risks, and we reevaluate on a regular basis. We said at least once per year because the threat landscape is continuously changing. And what's a good solution today may not be a good solution tomorrow. And if we keep going along saying, well, it ain't broke, we're going to continue to find ourselves on the reactive end of business. And that really is where we've been traditionally. We go along, go along, and it's kind of like, shh, knock on wood, everything's fine. And all of a sudden we have a major crisis and we go, shh, didn't see that coming. Well, we didn't see it coming because we weren't looking, right? It's very difficult to survive in the world today without just being overwhelmed by the idea that, yeah, there are a lot of threats. There are a lot of entities out there. You know, you look at uh, the mafia and organized crime, you know, very heavily involved in some of these identity breaches and some of the cyber crime that we're seeing. Uh, gangs coming off the streets per se because it's a lot less risky to sit behind a computer and a lot more lucrative. You know, typical criminals. We see state actors. We see disgruntled employees. We see corporate espionage. You can't exist today and bury your head in the sand. We have to understand that cyber threat is real. It can and will impact us if we don't take an active risk management strategy, if we don't take an active approach. All right. So that risk management life cycle is what we're going to base this course on. All right. Now, risks in projects. Uh, if any of you have managed projects before, been a project manager, or worked around project management, that's full of risk, of course. Um, with projects, you know, we have this finite time-bound set of activities that's designed towards producing something unique. So we have all sorts of different risks associated with it. Now, the C-Risk exam takes the risk management processes from PMI's framework. So basically, if you've studied project management per PMI, like if you've gotten the CAPM certification, Certified Associated Project Management, or the Project Management Professional certification, you will have seen this framework of project management. So it's a little bit of a shift in gears, but I think this is something that's testable. And even if it weren't, many of us in our career have found ourselves managing projects in one aspect or another. So it's certainly relevant to look at risks in relation to projects.